Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Give it a house, how's everybody doing? Um, so I'm doing good. I've decided today that I wanted to do something a little different. So because I've been doing the journal stuff, and the miniature stuff, and, and the mixed media type stuff does kind of bleed over um, into some of it. But um, I just wanted to do something different. So um, I was watching a bunch of different videos. That's, that's usually how it happens is I'll be on YouTube watching things and I'm like, oh, I need to do something like that. Um, so I decided, you know, I need to play with some of my kits from Retro Cafe Art Gallery. And I have a whole bunch of them. I actually have an entire drawer um, in my desk that has tons of these kits in them. Um, and every time I go on the site, I look at the kits. I'm like, oh, I need this. And I think to myself, I may already have this, so I should probably not do that. Um, so anyways, I went into my Retro Cafe drawer and, and pulled out a couple of the um, Santos doll kits. So Santos dolls are a, um, a traditional uh, Hispanic handicraft, you know, that's been done since the you know, 1700s, 1800s. Um, and traditionally they were done kind of as a uh, religious sort of, you can have your own kind of shrine, I guess, um, in your house uh, to different saints or what have you. So that's sort of where they started. And then of course they came over here to uh, North and South America and have changed it a little bit but basically it's it's kind of an art doll um and you can you can make it however you like you can have it as a religious thing you can have it as just hey this stuff looks cool or yeah whatever you want so um these are what the kits look like so the kits that she has range anywhere from tiny this one's going to be really small i haven't done a little small one um to this is probably about the average size right here and that's the one i'm going to play with today these and I'll show you some examples of them so um, most of the times they have like the cage to them so like this one here I'll bring this up so you can see kind of the detail I have stuff kind of hanging from here um, and of course I do stuff on the back as well because you know you don't want to turn it around and have it look terrible so um, so you can do this style here and there's also the ones that are more just flat they don't have the cage necessarily this is more of an art doll style one but of course this is a Halloween one and if you look on the back you know I've decorated the back as well and I have quite a few of them there's a mermaid one the thing I noticed when I was getting these down um, so that I could show y'all is Jesus I need to dust you know <laughs> it's one of those things that I just I just don't do very often and, and certainly not on the shelves that hold all my artwork because all my artwork is very fiddly so there's another one that I did, some Marie Antoinette one. So you have the little Eiffel Towers hanging down. Um, and of course there's the back. And then she has some larger ones too. So this one's pretty big. So this one of course is another cat. And then it's got the different fibers. This one's kind of more of a flat. And then it's got sort of the shrine box in the back. And then this is the big huge one here. I have to move these. Give me one second. Okay, so this one is one of the large shrine dolls here. So as you can see, let's see if I turn it this way. This is pretty big. So um, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. Um, this is the back of it here. And so I just kind of want to play with some of my art supplies, basically, that I haven't played with in a while. So these lend themselves to a lot of different things. Texture paste, rust textures, crackle cobwebs. I'll just pretend I added those. Um, gears, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, like this was just a white um, resin thing and so I did a patina finish on it. That sort of thing. And so the one we're going to make today is going to be more around this size. Now this was a specific um, steampunk one so it came with the wings. Um, I don't have the wings but I do have all the stuff that I put um, that I did the molds with. So I have in here some bat wings that I can use. It's kind of hard to see with the light on. There we go. Look at that. Um, so I've got some bat wings. I've got some other stuff in here. Then we'll play with this stuff in here and use it on there too. Um, but yeah, the one thing um, with these different kits is she has lots of examples, obviously, on the site. And, and there's a lot of people who, who do these that you can go look at. But I didn't find a lot of here's how to put this together and here's how to put the paper on and, and blah, you know, on YouTube way back when, when I first started making these. 
So I figured, you know what? Let's have a play with this. I, I would say it's going to be quick and easy, but every time I say that, it takes seven years. So um, this could be one part. This could be two parts. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of fast forwarding involved. So basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll, tell, I'll show you the steps and then I'll fast forward through me doing the steps um, and then kind of back and forth. So maybe this won't take the rest of our lives. That might be fun. Okay. So we get some stuff ready and some papers picked out and whatnot, and we will start playing with this. So the first step, obviously, is take it out of the package. Neat, right? So um, it comes with these little brads. These brads are so you can articulate the arms. Um, I believe you can get these dolls with or without the articulated um, arms. I, I prefer them with them articulated. That way I can kind of pose them around as I want. Um, and then this is the main part of the kit. So this is MDF. So it's the same kind of stuff like they make clipboard bases out of. It's nice and strong. It's nice and thick. Um, and then when it's cut out, they use a laser cutter. So step number one is always to wipe the edges down. I use a baby wipe. Um, I'll kind of wipe the top off a little bit too. See, because you've got that soot on there. And so she has these little sticker things on here. And oh, just since we have it, there you go. Retrocafeart.com. Um, and I've, I've seen other of the cage doll kits and and honestly hers are my absolute favorite they're just so pretty and and there's little instructions here and, and it shows you kind of how it's put together they're they're real easy but um it's just you know what steps do you take in decorating them right and this is a low mask sticker but you know it does that quite a bit okay so that was a lot more of an ordeal than it should have been but normally they come right off in one shot but of course since i'm filming this it decided it was going to be difficult and so um anyways that that sticker is just to kind of hold all these pieces in place for you so you just basically lift that up and off there goes that part and same like here you'll have little pieces that are in there if um just use these. you know if they're in there you can just kind of take something and poke them out because you don't need them same with the little arms, little armhole bits will, will usually come out before you go to take them out. But if they don't, um, you just poke them right out. So again, we're going to go around. We're going to clean all the edges to get rid of any of the char that's left over in the dust from the laser cutting process. So we've got a nice clean surface to work with. So as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff that comes off during that process. And, and otherwise, this will be stuff that will be coming off on your hands or, um, you know, getting into your paint and changing the color of your paint kind of thing um, and, and making it not stick properly. So that's why you always do that step first. So now we have our main components. So we've got our bottom stand. This is the top stand. Dolls with arms. There's a little crown. It comes with it, obviously it's optional. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Like on this one, um, I actually went with more of a gear style clock piece thing, um, even though it did have something. And then I just hang on to these because they're useful for other things. I'll, I'll come up with use for it at some point, but they fit right on their head like that. Oops, super cute. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're actually gonna cover this and, and paint this and stuff, but just real quick, easy peasy putting these together. They have little slot tabs. Yeah, let's see. Let me see if I can fix my lighting here. It's a little better for the moment. So you have these little um, slots here and they fit into these tabs and you just, you glue them in like this and then the top one will fit on here like this. And then eventually, you know, your doll will fit on the top like this, okay? Let me fix my lighting back. So as you can imagine, if I were to have this put together like this, it's gonna be really difficult for me to get in here and paint and, and do all the stuff that I wanna do. So I always do that before I put it together. So generally with these bars here, you know, I'll use some kind of paper and that's what we're gonna use. Um, but I also like the edges painted. 
So I generally tend to paint those first because the chances of me putting paper on here and then being able to paint the edge without getting it all over the paper is really slim to none. So the first stop with all these is gonna be gesso. And I'm probably gonna use the black gesso just because I like to use a lot of metallic stuff and it, it pops up better um, on a black base than it does on a white base. So what I'm gonna do is, and I'm leaving the other one up here kind of as an example sort of thing so I can show you along the way, but um, you think I would have this stuff a little more prepared, right? So these on here. And the crown I'm probably not gonna use, so I'm just gonna set that off to the side. If I wanna use it later, of course I can paint it later, big deal, but um, okay. So here's all of our pieces. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the edges of them. If you wanted to paint um, the doll versus doing um, scrapbook paper type stuff or, or any other kind of thing, um, you would go ahead and paint the whole thing instead of just the um, edges. But I'm gonna do scrapbook paper, so I'm just gonna paint the edges. And when you're doing that, don't, don't paint these up here. So up here where you've got this tab, you don't wanna paint that and you want to avoid getting paint into the holes in here because otherwise they're not gonna fit very good and you'll have to fiddle with them to get them to fit. And then of course the same goes for this tab at the bottom. So I'll just avoid this part and, and you don't really need to paint the bottom because it's gonna be glued down so nobody's gonna see it. So I will fast forward and I will get all this stuff painted. Great, so these are all painted on their edges. Um, you'll notice the top and the bottom. Um, I actually painted one side of them. It's because generally the bottom I'll just paint. Um, and then the underside of that one I'll just paint most of the time too. So um, that way in case I decide to do that, I'm already ready to go. So I'm gonna go clean my hands off a bit and clean my brush off and I will be right back. So now that the gesso has dried on these um, around the edges and all of that, before we can paint any edges or, or do anything remotely like that, we kind of need to decide what are we going to use. So um, I'm going to use scrapbook paper to cover everything. That's just what I prefer to use. Um, so I have a few choices here. I have some Tim Holtz stuff. Kind of bring this up this way. So I really, really like this. I'm, I'm a sucker for anything teal. Um, so that's a choice there. And then... In this one, let me fix my lighting. That's a little bit better. Okay, we've got this one here. This is kind of like a teal worn wallpaper or something. And then I put this here to save the place of this one as well. So this one and this one will work quite nicely together, I think. And then they also do kind of work with this sort of as a contrast piece. 
and this is the abandoned um, one. I think he'd come out with it around Halloween or something one year, and it's just, it's fantastic. And, and it's, it's got so much, you know, stuff done to it, you, you kind of don't even have to do anything to it, you know. We will, but you don't really have to. So, anyways, that's these. And this is the back of this here. And although this is really cool, it's, it's a little too fall. And I do like this one as well. So, we may be able to pick a few of them because we'll need a color for the bars that are going down. One for these, I usually like to make these the same, and then one for her and the arms and all that. So we have those. This one, incidentally, is the departed one. Same kind of thing. And then this is Stamperia. So it's the Lady Vagabond. This is the 8x8. Um, part of the reason I want to use the 8x8 is because it's a smaller scale. But I was looking through some of these to get kind of some ideas, and there's some really cool pictures in here, but... Um, you know, like the newsprint stuff. I don't want to destroy this whole page just for one little thing. And, you know, some maps and, and all kinds of neat things. I love this, but I, I really like this too. <laughs> so that's, that's part of the problem is deciding, you know, which one you want to give up because they only do one page in here. And when I saw this row of books, I thought, well, that's really cool. And it's got a book cover sort of thing. And then another page later, you've got these. So these are, are like, you know, cards. You can cut them out and, and make little journal cards with them. But if you notice, the body fits here. So what I was thinking maybe is like this one here would go with those other ones. Cut it out so the label is kind of in the center here. And then they also have all these little... Um, kind of ephemera type pieces you can cut out as well, which is fairly new. They, they didn't used to do this, but I really like it. I thought, oh, we could cut out these smaller scale books and they could be on either side of the front and back. And then there's also towards the front, let's see if I can find it, ah, the very front, there's these escutcheon plates like for doors. And I thought, oh, that would be really cool going f all the way down the front or the back. Um, so it would probably be, I don't know if I do that and the books necessarily. So maybe this on the front, the books on the back. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out, but that's, that's the difficult part. And then the other part you need to decide on, of course, is how are you going to fix your lighting? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard going from light color things to dark color things, making sure y'all can see everything. But, um, so she's going to need a face. Now, if you know how to paint, then you can paint a face. I do not know how to paint. So I kind of rely on something else. And so like on this one here, this right here is one of these. So these I also get from Retro Cafe and they're really neat. They come in packages like this um, and they're sized specifically to fit their different kits because you have a bunch of different sizes of kits all the way from the large to the small. Um, and they're already cut out for you, which is brilliant. So. These here, I've got a couple different styles, I think. So this is kind of like a Renaissance sort of thing. This is just kind of vintage, Victorian maybe, illustration. There's a Marie Antoinette type deal. These are, again, more Renaissance. Um, some of them, like she looks just, that's, man, that's resting bitch face right there. There you go. If you ever want to know what that was, right there. I've got those. And though, we also have cats. <laughs> so, do I want to make it with a cat head? I don't know. Sometimes I do. And see, it fits right on there. Um, this one, some of them are kind of, of weird with the cats. Because, of course, the neck isn't going to fit. But with these, the necks do. They are sized to fit on here. Um, so, if we use this one, for example... You know, the, the neck and the, the collar piece that's on here can be used as the collar of the outfit, that sort of thing. Um, this, again, you kind of move it down so that it aligns with here, and that's where you're going to get your best, where it's going to look correct. Because if you put the wrong size head on there, you can really tell. It ends up looking really weird. Um, so anyways, that's we, we have some choices here. So I think what we might do is... Go ahead and start picking out the papers and, and decide where it's going to go on here. Then we'll maybe match the heads up and go, okay, this looks good with this. Because we may think, oh, this looks great. 
but this is more of like I would expect French paper or kind of you know Baroque kind of something it may not go with grunge because she's not very grunge you know but other things can other things a little more neutral so I'm going to move this stuff and I will um, take those papers out and we'll start messing around with them so I have pulled out these four here um, I do like the idea of using this on the back and maybe having those books there and we can maybe incorporate some books somewhere else in the design as well. We'll see. Um, that leaves these three. So this one I pulled out because it's it still matches this but it's a little more neutral and for the arms I do like to keep them fairly neutral. Um, I don't like to go overboard with them. So I think that'll be for the arms and then we'll use this for the front and then maybe the sketch and plate we'll we'll see how that looks on there um, for the front and this for the these two pieces here we'll use this so and holding it up this here gives you a nice contrast between this and this so i think this bottom piece will be in here and then we'll use this top one kind of in here we want to sort of avoid the the more yellow and green areas because that really doesn't kind of go but the blue definitely does so what we're going to do is I'm going to move some of this stuff around here um, I'm going to since I've decided I'm going to take this piece I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to roughly cut um, a piece large enough to cover it and then I will do the same here. The only thing I really have to watch is making sure that I stick it to the correct side of the paper because I've done that one. That's that's always nice. Okay, so there's those two. And then now for the body, I do want to get some of this in here, but I want more of this type thing. So I'm thinking maybe here might work, although this is a lot more of the teal. Hmm. Yeah, maybe about here. All right. So this we only need to go up to the neck because we're going to have the little um, headpiece in there. So we don't have to worry about that. That will be covered. But we do want to go, you know, far enough up so that we're getting the, the neck in there so there's not a gap. So there's the back or the front of that. And then we're going to use this book here because this matches everything else for the back. So I'll just cut this out this way. And these are cool too because they, they have the design printed on the back. So if you do ever get the Stamperia papers, um, it's really fun because you can cut this out and it's, it's good to go that way. So, all right, put that away. And for the arms... We're going to do both sides of arms and legs. Um, and then I think for these posts, we'll probably use this as well. So let's see how we're looking. Will it fit? It should fit because you need to do both sides. So yeah, we should be able to do that. So this paper will leave whole because we're going to just glue all those down in one shot and make it easier. So we'll get that out of the way. All right, so we have more or less a game plan. Um, so how are we going to put this stuff on there? Well, we're going to use Mod Podge. So we'll put Mod Podge on the surface and we will stick it down to that and we'll let it dry. Um, I usually like to keep, you know, a smaller paintbrush handy that's dry just to get it out of these spots because again, we are going to have to cut all those little things out. It's, it's not as bad as it looks, but it's still a bit of a pain. So you want to make sure you keep any extra um, glue and things out of there. It's going to interfere with how this works. Um, and same with this piece. You know, this will go on here. I'm not completely sure if I want to... Um, oh, you know. Actually, yes. Um, I'll probably be painting the bottom of that, so that shouldn't be a big deal. On this one, though, and I always forget this part... Um, when I do whatever's going on the top layer, I actually only cut this center hole out. And I leave these covered because these are going to fit in like this. 
And so I don't want you to see a bunch of, of holes there. So I, I like to have it completely covered with this. So we're not going to have to do the little holes in this. Um, and then we can paint the bottom of this as well. So let's do that. Or should we paint it first? Nope. You know, we're going to put the paper on first. <laughs> we indecision theater. Okay. So let me get my Mod Podge open here. This is just regular matte Mod Podge and I get the big jars and I just keep my small jar refilled with it just because it's easier to deal with. Um, and then with paint brushes, I, I buy these at um, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, wherever. They have like these classroom packs that have a ton because Mod Podge will destroy your brush fairly quickly over time. So that way, um, if it if it dies, I don't care because it wasn't, you know, some super expensive brush. So since we did this to paint on it, we're going to put the Mod Podge on this side. So all you do is you just coat it with Mod Podge and we're going to stick it down. So I'm going to do that with all these pieces and um, fast forward through it. And I will meet you back when these are all glued down on their first side. Alright, so now that these have had a little bit of a chance to dry, the hands and arms you do not want to do until they're very, very dry, especially the hands. So it's very, very easy to tear that paper on the other side. So these will go for a little bit. Um, and then these right here, I forgot to mention before I start gluing them down, um, it looks like that's popping up a little bit, so I'll have to re-glue that. Um, but one of the things you want to do is make sure that that these parts that are sticking up, these little tabs, do not have paper on them because again they have to go in these slots so if you have paper on them it makes it harder for them to um, fit in there. So like on these sides I only put the glue up to the line so that way once I cut them out it'll be easier for me to cut across and, and make sure that that spot is free. So in this one once we get to cutting some of these out we can um, just re-glue it with the Mod Podge. So in order to free your paper from this, you have a few options. You can use craft knife or you can use scissors. Um, generally on things like this, I, I tend to prefer to use the scissors just because it's easier. Um, and then we're going to be sanding the edges anyway. So don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect because we're going to sand it, but we're going to cut around this and then we're going to make sure that it's really secure over these little tiny bits there on the other side before we go cutting these little holes out. All right, and on this one, I tend to like to use the craft knife just because getting through some of those curves with the scissors is rather difficult. We'll go around the edges with the craft knife and usually I'll kind of take parts off just to make it easier instead of, you know, separating one big huge piece. This is the fun part because then when you turn it around you get to see how your design looks once it's cut out. If it looks as cool as you thought it was going to. 
If not, you just take the paper off and do it again. <laughs> So like on this part here, and we're going to do that to these, um, these are much easiest to cut, much easiest, that's not even a thing, much easier to cut out with a craft knife because they're straight edge. Um, so what I've done is I've cut along these two edges here. I'm going to flip it over and I kind of will fold it so I can see where I'm going and I very gently cut straight across from here to here and then pull that off. So that way it's keeping that tab uncovered there. Okay, so I'll set this up here. If you look here, you can see that it's not, you know, a super exact job of cutting because basically when I cut around it this way, I'm doing more of the rough cut of it. And with the hand, you have to be very, very careful because even doing that with the craft knife, if it's not sharp, it'll grab that paper and pull and then you'll be missing like the hand of it, which is always annoying. So in order to finish off these pieces, I sand the edges. So you just kind of sand down and what it'll do is any of those places where, you know, you see how it's got kind of, you know, a piece sticking out, it'll remove that. And just do it very gently and again with the hands, just be very, very careful. When you're at the fingers, go down and very gently. I kind of go in here and down. These you only, usually only have to like hit it once to get the, the fingers the way you want them. And then you'll know it's doing good because you'll have the, you know, the little paper bits coming off of there. So just keep going until they go away. And see, this is just a little bit over on that end, so we'll do that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for all these pieces is I'm going to sand them and I'll be back to you to show you the next step. Now we've got the edges all sanded down. As you can see, it really smoothed out places like on the shoulder. Um, if you look at the back though, you could see, 
in theory you can see I don't know I don't know how to get it to focus really good at that length but um, if you see white paper sticking out you know you still have just a tiny bit more to do okay so that's what we're gonna do there now this piece here and you need to check all your pieces these we don't need to worry about because these just have the the tabs that stick out so they're good but these have holes in them and these holes are for attaching the arms and then the arms will have holes for attaching and, and stuff like that so before we put our other side on we need to clear these holes so what I do is I take it and I kind of put my finger on this edge because sometimes when you go to poke that it'll poke the paper right off so I just do just a tiny bit just enough to go right through so I can see it from this side and then I go from this side in and just kind of work it around so that I have the hole there and you want to make sure it stays the same size um, as it originally was because you're gonna have to put a brad through that okay and do the same with the other side Okay, so now we have the holes back in there. So I'm gonna do that to the arm pieces as well. So there we have it. The holes are back in the arms and they are back in the body. These ones, luckily we only have to do the paper on the one side, but whereas we wanna leave these without cutting them open so that when we have our top it'll be you know nice and flat you're not going to see the ends of these we do need that middle one there so what you do is you take your craft knife and I will take it and put my point in that very corner and come down until I'm all the way through and then do that on the other side okay so it's coming through here straight down and then I'll turn it this way and go here and down. Now these have very little clearance to do that on this side. So I usually will flip it over then and kind of turn it in the light until I can see where that was. And I'll go through from the front. Because you can see if you, if you kind of move it around, here if I push it down like that, you can see a little bit better. You can see where you stopped and you can kind of run the knife on there and then take a piece out and then flip it back over and double check there's no more white showing um, and there isn't say maybe if I hold it that way you can see it better but there's no more white showing and then I'll take this piece here and I will put it in there just to make sure I've got my clearance and I do so we are good there on this one we have to do that with these little ones, but I do it the same way. So I'm gonna start at this top corner. And go through, and I do that to all of them. All the way around, and then I'll flip, and then I'll start doing them the other way. So if any of them is gonna give you a problem, it's gonna be this one because that clearance is so thin. So again, what I do is I kind of push it around so I can see it and I will put the blade down and take care of that side first, okay? And then go up to the end on this one. Ta-da! And obviously that needs a little bit of clean up there. So once you've done that, then you can kind of take your blade in there and you can sort of clean that edge up but you just really want to avoid tearing that piece there. So always cut away from that piece because <laughs> otherwise, yeah, it's, it's really easy to tear that. Not that it's, you know, the end of the world. If you do, you can cover it with paint and stuff, but all right. I'm just kind of go along the edges with the craft knife and I will do that to the rest of these.
So there we have it. So, you know, as you find and cut the top and the bottom off, if you try to do it all through the back, the chances of tearing this paper are very high. But you can sort of let the, the edges of it, you know, guide your craft knife down to, to make sure that you clear these openings real good. And then you can, of course, check by taking one of these pieces and putting it in there. And see, it fits in there. So we got that clear enough. Usually I kind of do that to all of them just to make sure because half the time just putting that in there like that will sort of, if there was any little bit that got missed, it'll kind of push it down in there anyway. All right, so there we go. So this is good to go. This is good to go. The rest of these need their back pieces. So we're gonna do the same sort of thing. Again with this, we're gonna go up to about here. Actually, we'll, we'll put the bottom along this bottom line here and then go up that way, probably be easier. Just make sure you're putting it on the correct side of the paper. I cannot tell you how many times I've put it on the wrong side of the paper. So everybody is glued down really nice. And I did go around the edges with the um, paintbrush after I kind of wiped it off, just to kind of, you know, it, it'll build up a bunch around the, the edge and it's much easier to cut it out if you don't have that there. So I just kind of moved it around. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these dry. I'm gonna cut these out um, and sand them and all that stuff. And then I'll be back with you after that. All right, so I'm sure you can guess that, um, especially by the thumbnail, I'm sure that brought you here, that this is gonna be a multi-part series. Um, these these art dolls take quite a while to make because they're very detailed and everything. And, and I like to leave all the little bits in because I know when I was learning how to do these things, you know, even something as simple as here's how you put this together and hey, you should put the paper on first. And, and that sort of stuff wasn't really, there wasn't very much of it. There's more now, but, um, so that's why I like to leave those parts in. So if you are experienced, I mean, feel free to fast forward through stuff. Um, I don't know how to set up the little chapter thing so you can skip around. I'll, I'll maybe figure that out someday. But um, so we finished doing all the papering and all that stuff. So in the, um, the next episode, I guess you can say, we will be um, doing the finishes and we will be um, assembling the actual doll itself and then I'm not sure how many parts this is going to end up being but I'm trying to keep it to under an hour <laughs> on all these trying not always working but um, anyway so that's what we're going to do next so I will see you guys then see you later bye